Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make this, a Raspberry Pi Zero version 2, transmit signals around the world like this. Now for those that don't know what a Raspberry Pi is or what it can be used for, here's a quick explanation. So in a nutshell, it's a single board computer. This particular version, the Pi Zero version 2, contains a 1 GHz quad-core 64-bit ARM processor. It has built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB ports, and a mini HDMI connector. Now, primarily, most users will install some form of Linux-based operating system onto an SD card, which is then fitted into the device. The project which I'm going to show you today is literally one of millions available that's compatible with the Raspberry Pi. Now, WSPR Pi project is also compatible with other versions of the Raspberry Pi, not just the Pi Zero 2. However, as the Pi Zero 2 is the latest SBC available, I wanted to test it to see how well the WSPR Pi project still worked on this latest hardware. So first off, we need to understand that the operating system for the Pi is stored on the micro SD card. On the official Raspberry Pi website, you can download an easy to use SD imaging tool. So first, insert your SD card into your computer's SD card reader, head over to raspberrypi.com and download the installer for your operating system. And once downloaded, run the installer. Here you'll be able to choose what operating system to install to the SD card. And here you can see I'm selecting the top option, which is to install the latest Pi OS. Make sure you select the correct storage device, i.e. your SD card, and then click right. Now after a few minutes, it will finish and the imaging tool will most likely eject the SD card, but you will need to remove it and plug it back in again as we need to add a couple of files to the boot drive on the SD card. So remove the SD card and just reinsert it back into your computer and you should now be able to have access to the boot partition on the SD card. The file we need to create is a file named SSH and its contents is literally empty. Now right mouse click and select new text file, but before saving the file, simply change the name to SSH with no file extension. What we also need to do is create a Wi-Fi file so that when you power on the Pi Zero, it will automatically connect to your Wi-Fi router. The easiest way I've found to do this is actually using an online tool. I use the one over on pistar.uk website. So simply go to the Pistar tool and select Wi-Fi Builder, enter your Wi-Fi's SSID and password, and then download the file. The file will be saved as wpa underscore supplicant.conf. Simply drag or copy and paste this file into the same boot drive as you did with the SSH file. You can now remove the SD card from your computer and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. Now when the Pi boots up, it should now connect to your Wi-Fi router. So you may need to log into your router's admin page so that you can find out the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Now you could at this point plug in a monitor and keyboard into the Pi and control it that way. But I much prefer to use my computer and two applications, one called Putty, which is used for SSH, and the other is VNC Viewer for remote control in the Pi's desktop. And once you have the Pi's IP address, enter this into Putty and connect. The default password for a fresh Pi installation is Pi for the username and then Raspberry for the password. The only thing we're going to do here is enable the VNC server. So type sudo space raspi dash config and then from this screen, we can go down to the interface options and enable the VNC server. Now once enabled and back to the command prompt, just type sudo reboot now to restart the Pi. Now that the VNC server is enabled, I'm going to load VNC viewer on my PC. Enter the IP address of the Pi Zero and connect. Now you will be prompted for a username and password, so just use Pi and then Raspberry. Once connected, you'll see the Pi's desktop and you'll be presented with a welcome screen. Now here you can change the default password, which I would recommend doing. We now need to install the WSPR software and this can be done easily by copying the commands from the GitHub page. On the Pi desktop, open the terminal window and copy and paste the first command, which is sudo space apt-get space install space git and then press enter. Then copy and paste the git clone command, 
then cd into the WSPR folder and type make. Now for me, there was an error while making and after some research, I found a solution. What you need to do is edit a file called mailbox.c and add a line of code like this. After adding the line of code, save the file and then type make again. This should now compile and allow you to move on to the last command, which is sudo make install. Now to test everything is working, simply type in WSPR in the terminal window and hit enter. If all goes well, you'll actually be presented with a message asking you to specify the correct parameters. So now I'm going to copy and paste one of the WSPI example commands and then edit it with my information. The first thing I'll do is add 80 and 20 meter bands at the end of the line of the code. I will then change the power output. Now, just to note, this is not to adjust the actual power output. It's just telling anyone that receives the signal the power level at which the transmitter is sending the signal. I'll then enter the first half of my Maidenhead locator, like IO91, and then I will change the call sign to mine. As soon as I hit enter, WSPR Pi will sit there continuously transmitting at the appropriate time on the selected bands. Now, before you do this, you must connect your antenna. I'm using an NFED half wave, which is resonant on multiple bands, so I don't need a tuner. The center of the coax connects to the Raspberry Pi GPO4, which is actually pin 7. The outer braid of the antenna coax is connected to ground, which is pin 9 of the Raspberry Pi header. I must also mention that even though this works extremely well as it is, it is recommended to use low pass filters between the Pi and your antenna. This is due to the Pi generating a square wave RF output and could potentially create some rather unwanted harmonics. Now I left mine running for 24 hours and then I came back to check the progress on the WSPRnet website. I was actually quite amazed to how far the signal had traveled, especially as the Pi Zero 2 is not designed as a transmitter, it's a single board computer. And these guys which wrote the software have cleverly found a way of how to modulate one of the GPIO pins. Now with the talk of low pass filters, there are companies out there which make add-on filter boards, which also include a small power amplifier taking the 10 milliwatt from the Pi up to around 200 milliwatts. Now I've experimented in the past with this project and with just 100 to 200 milliwatts, my signal was reached as far as Australia and the east coast of the USA from here in the UK. Well, there we go, guys. That's an overview of WSPR Pi running on the Pi Zero version 2. And to me, it looks like it performed just as well as it does on the older Raspberry Pis. Now, if you guys have used this before, let me know your results. I'll be quite interested to learn how well it worked for you guys. If you like this content, want to see more of it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Meow.